Hello and welcome to another Raggy's beer review. So over in the beer room tonight and as you can tell I has fully dressed up so because it's absolutely freezing. Uh, today one of the uh, 12 beers of Christmas uh, that I got with the Blue Monkey beers in I had to ditch it in the end because I think I just got overwhelmed with doing so many um, beers from advent calendars but uh, anyway wanted to crack on so this is blue monkey this is their new hampshire uh ipa six percent abv um hops of citra mosaic Idaho seven based in the gilt book area of nottingham well, on the outskirts of nottingham to be fair so here we go let's uh award-winning beer i know they've won awards for this beer i couldn't tell you what the awards are but uh Oh, so freezing cold day. Come down the shed to drink a freezing cold beer. Must be mad. And here we go. The orangey paw. Uh, a finger of white head on this. The, the beer room sometimes is not the best place to do beer reviews simply because the lighting is not fantastic in here. So um, always something to note with any beers that look orangey. And sometimes they can, uh, not this one, but sometimes they can look like they're oxidised when they're not. Um, and I'll give you an example. I did a grain brew with a Citra IPA. Uh, triple dry hop Citra. Uh, was it quadruple dry hops? Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Looked awful in the beer room. Took it outside, took a photo. Looked amazing. So lighting is, is that thing. I can't help the lighting in here. Uh, it's not a professional studio. It is what it is. Um, so anyway, here we go. Ooh, it's got a beautiful aroma to it. And even it's shed temperature, critically, keg temperature, it's got a good aroma. I've been saying this with a lot of beers, even craft beer, that you crack it open and there's literally no aroma, uh, uh, you know, at cold, eye keg temperature, but this has got a good aroma on it, so that's, that's good. Beers like this and the recent barrel age beers that they did, they were stunning. Um, I'm really, you know, for the future for, for Blue Monkey, I'd be interested to see where they go in the future with their barrel aging. I did pass on my um, uh, thoughts to their uh, head brewer uh, about how good the barrel age were. You know, they were stunning um, beers. Um, it certainly puts them on the market. And the reason why I chose this glass is because it's Nottingham Craft Beer Festival. And I do hope that the people running Nottingham Craft Beer Festival this year um, get Blue Monkey in. I think their credentials now have proven that they've uh, gone into the world of craft beer and they are more craft than some of the breweries that are down there. Um, Without naming names, obviously. Um, and obviously, if the rumours are true, the navigation's gone, there's there's a big hole there to be filled in Blue Monkeys. Certainly the uh, one of the, the breweries to, to fill that hole. Although I was surprised they weren't there last year, to be fair. But um, I am nothing to do with any uh, beer festival. Uh, never been invited to do anything with any beer festival or, or, or anything. So it is what it is on that side of things. And, uh, although, why would they invite me anyway? Um, just some blokes who talk, talks about beer in his shed. Yes. And i uh, got to be honest, and, I, and I've been saying this for weeks now, that I'm not sure I'm going to go to any beer festivals this year. 
uh, I might change. It might just be the winter blues. Uh, when the festivals get near, I, I might change my mind. But at the moment, um, yeah, I'm certainly not thinking of going to any beer festivals this year. Fresh as you like, tasting so fresh. Just wanted to get the rest of the can in. There we go. Um, cut. Now you know when a beer is good because when you look at your, you know, the uh, people like B Convergent and, and breweries like that. When a beer from Blue Monkey, I close my eyes and I could be drinking their beers, which certainly means that Blue Monkey are up there, you know, with those, um, you know, aforementioned craft beer breweries. So it's a lovely tropical. Um, I'd say juice fest of a beer. It's not too twangy. It's easy drinking. Um, I've had this, I'm sure I've had this in the Crown Inn in Beeston as well. Nottingham's best pub. Uh, with no shadow of a doubt there. You know, uh, their range of beers is just, yeah, outstanding. Good staff, great pub, lots of nooks and crannies to sit in. Um, fantastic pub. And people, someone just asked me tonight, have you done a beer of the year last year? Uh, and I didn't. Um, for my own reasons, I've just not bothered this year. Um, for, for whatever reasons. And uh, But I'll say this, that Blue Monkey are two of the top beers in the year. In my top five beers of the year. So... That'll tell you what I really thought about those beers. And, uh, yeah, the tequila and the old turkey uh, were the ones for me uh, that were absolutely in the top beers of the year. Um, funnily enough, <laughs> most of the beers of the year came local. Um, and even, even though I've drank beers from further afield... Um, Funny, it's beers like this that um, reinvigorate me when I'm feeling, I don't think of the words jaded, um, or uninterested, yeah, uninterested, that's, that's a worrying thing, to be uninterested in the world of beer reviews, yeah, that is slightly worrying, and uh, yeah. I've had moments, blips before, where I've not been happy with breweries locally, nationally, and not been happy with styles of beer, and uh, too many red cards. <laughs> Never even get a red card these days. I'm either I'm either that good, or I just don't ever get drunk. And uh, in fact, the last time I really got drunk, I fell over and did that. So, yeah. Um, I can't even remember being that drunk, to be fair. I think it was just a bit of bad luck. But, uh, yeah. Since Christmas, I've, um, yeah, the motivation is not there. <laughs> we'll see how it goes in the future. Anyway, back to the beer. Slight tangent there. I do apologise for tangents. Um, talking. Talking, you know, it's such a key thing in this world talking and that and uh, I used to be a massive wrestling fan and they kind of killed it for me when, when they said it wasn't real and it's like what not real <laughs> and it killed it for me and uh, it wasn't long after that that I stopped watching wrestling stopped collecting the magazines and, and I really fell out of love for it you know I, I really just lost the interest 
totally. And for many years, I was into video games, um, what they call homebrew. Not homebrew that you brew, homebrew as in um, hacking video game consoles and that sort of thing. And uh, that's why in this beer room, I've got like 20 games consoles there, multiple game consoles all wrapped up, uh, a lot of money's worth if, if, if I was to sell them, not that I would. Um, and I can't, not fell out of love with it, but I got too busy. Other, other hobbies have took over. And it's funny, really, because five years ago, I got into the world of beer reviews. And, um, yeah, there's, it, there does seem to be... Um, it's not the lives. I have no interest in lives anymore. Um, I just feel it's... as You know, I just feel that I've done my course with them. Um, um, yeah. And like last week I pulled out of all the extra groups that I was in on Facebook, started doing me, me gardening channel more. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that all of us with hobbies, we go through a transition and uh, the, a period where you, you you think about the hobby you're doing and you think, yeah, do I really need to, am I really bothered about that hobby anymore? And um, yes, the, I may click out of it in a few weeks, but at the moment, oof, um, I had to force myself to come down and do a beer review tonight, which is unlike me. Uh, I mean, beer reviews, are, uh, I drink, the only reason I drink a beer is because of a beer review. So it tells you how much I drink, but there you go. Can't remember. Um, but yeah, yeah. So, mm. And uh, it's weird, it's weird not feeling... There's times when I thought about knocking the beer reviews off before and uh, I, and that may just be me being a bit down at some, I'm not feeling down at all, uh, not, not in the slightest, nothing to do with mental health or anything like that. Um, maybe it's when it's coarse, you know, so yeah, it is what it is I suppose. <laughs> not like I get paid to do beer reviews or, or uh, uh, and uh, I mean there's lots of people who've watched my beer reviews you know the amount of views is staggering really um, it's getting less and less per video I've noticed that for a long time um, but there's lots of people doing beer reviews so that's what it is on that side of things um, mm. Yeah. Anyway, on with the bear review. <laughs> so it's a lovely looking pour, you know, uh, Blue Monkey, stunning pour from them. Oh, lovely tropical aroma. I mean, I'm getting mango and pineapple. I thought I got a hint of peach. It's so subjective. Depends what you've had in your nasal hair before. It's not just, it's not always about what you've drank, ate before, what you've, you know, and all those. Sometimes it's what you're smelling before. Yeah. There's a, a nice zesty punchiness. Six percent, you would not know that was six percent, not in the slightest. It tastes like a four percenter, perfect temperature for it. Um, I am happy to see where Blue Monkey are going, you know, um, in the grand scheme of things. Um, see where they're. Their ethos is got lots of people working for them. Four good pubs. Will they have any more pubs? It's always the interesting thing. 
um, the beers everywhere. I mean, I went down to Dorset and there were Blue Monkey beer there. And it's like, oh God, I've come, I've come away from Nottingham and there's Nottingham beer. And uh, oh, it was nice to see, you know, I mean, <laughs> <coughs> although one of the places had loads of Blue Monkey cask uh, pump clips on the wall. And then I says, oh, you got any cask? And he says, uh, no, we don't do a cask anymore. We haven't done any cask since 2020, since COVID. And it's like, so we had the keg and the keg was oxidised to eye heaven. Oh God, it was awful. Absolutely awful. I mean, oxidised, don't really, I don't really care. As long as it tastes all right, that's all I care about. But this looked awful. And it, yeah, it tasted okay, I suppose, but. So for me, the flagship beer of the uh, Blue Monkey Craft Beer fleet, as it were, uh, New Hampshire IPA, it's stunning. Uh, if you see it on keg, go and try it, you know, treat yourself. Um, obviously, their, their traditional beers are everywhere. But you don't really see their uh, keg beer that often. So when you do, it's worth it's worth seeing what's out there always making new beers i'm always interested when i go when i look on social media when i'm not bombarded with adverts that is to see what blue monkey are doing and uh, i suppose in, in, even if i walk away from the world of beer reviews at some stage uh i still be interested you know still keep i won't drop the raggy beer review channel that will always be there and and, and the social media aspect but uh, even if i do drop the beer reviews but um yeah So, beautiful orange pour, uh, tropical goodness on the taste, nice zesty punchiness. Uh, it's a lovely beer. 6% uh, ABV, doesn't taste anything like it. Uh, out of five, for me, yeah, a good 4.55 out of five. Yeah, definitely a top beer. Um, but on keg is where it really excels. Oh. Some beer on keg. Great in a can. Keg. Oh. Uh, and that's my review. Thank you for watching. See you soon.